All the way from London in 350 gram bags, which is a little bit different than what we do here in Australia. Do I make a big deal about this? I want to, but I also really like James Hoffman. Let's see what happens. Square mile, James Hoffman. I've been wanting to do this for ages, basically because I've been um, following Mr. Hoffman on the YouTubes for a fair while now. And um, I know he's part of a very successful coffee roasting company, something that you know, I aspire to be one day. Um, don't, I don't know how big he actually is. The company actually is. I assume they're quite big. Um, but uh, it's always good to have aspirations. And so I went on the interwebs and I, I bought some coffee. I bought his um, red brick espresso blend. And the first thing straight off the bat, they do 350 gram bags. And I think that's really interesting. Uh, it's definitely different to what, well, I'm sure there are roasters here that do it, but um, I, I don't know, I, I kind of like it. It's good. Um, feels good in the hand. Feels like you're getting a lot of value for your dollars because, you know, to get it shipped out here to Australia under a kilo of coffee, look, it wasn't cheap, uh, but that's no one's fault um, except the world's because of the exchange rate and whatnot. And it's, let's, say, let's say it's Brexit's fault. We'll say it's Brexit's fault. That's what we'll say. Um, anyway, so I just thought maybe um, I'd just buy some of his coffee and I'd taste it and I'd talk about the coffee itself and yeah it's really like it's brazil and colombia and i love that i do i, I absolutely love brazil colombia blends and i can't say that i have seen or heard of these farms or regions if they're regions they are, I'll, I'll find that out soon um and so I'm, I'm i'm really interested to see to try to have a look um so obviously uh, I'll, I'll open up a bag in a second and we'll have a look at the beans, but, but in all honesty, like iPhone cameras, you just can't, or, or phone cameras, you can't get a great um, look at the colour of the beans because for whatever reasons. Anyways, we're still going to have a look anyway. Um, and uh, roast date, 18th of the 2nd. Um, so, look, should be it should be prime. So yeah, we'll uh, dive right into it. Here we have some beans. Uh, I've done my best to get some uh, as much light in here as possible, but you know we'll make do with what we have. Um, so it looks like coffee, and that's that's a good thing. Absolutely, let's get some focus in on here. Um, one of the interesting things I found as we just refocus uh, was that there's a lot of um, broken beans. I guess, like shrapnel in here. Um, I took some I took some out from um, another pour of the bag and like there's a lot of shrapnel um, in there and it was actually pretty disconcerting and I, I didn't really know what to look, what to think of it because like we don't, I don't see it in my day-to-day -day coffee life. Um, and uh, it could be for a number of reasons, you know. It could be could have been transport. I mean, this coffee's been roasted in Europe. Sorry for the finger. Um, roasted in, in London and then, you know, bagged and shipped and thrown around by customs and stuff like that. So, look, customs, you know, and, and then, you know, threw it to Australia and then delivered to me. So, like, it's, take, it's, it's traveled a long way. So that might be one of the reasons. Although I will say it was very well packed in the box that uh, the box is very sturdy um, so yeah I wasn't really sure what to think of that and it's very quickly to draw it's very easy to quickly draw a comparison of if there's lots of rubbish and broken beans that it's low quality it's easy to draw that uh, conclusion but I know from a roaster's point of view that that's not always uh, the case because there are plenty of beans in the world everywhere wherever that are at a certain price point but cup well above what their price point would suggest and also that cup well above 
what uh, external cupping scores could suggest. So we will uh, run some shots and um, and see what it's uh, see what it's going to be like. We're looking for flavour notes of butterscotch, cherry, raisin, and almond. I will be looking for those. All right, so here's my Slayer uh, single group and my EK in the background. Um, I'm going to use the naked handle uh, or a naked, and a naked, well, naked handle or basket combination. Uh, I won't be using the pre-infusion on the Slayer. I'll just flick right over to um, the full espresso, nine bar. Um, I will also be using uh, my Pullman Tampa V1 OCD and 20 grams of espresso. Uh, for all you guys that want to know, the basket is a VST basket and it is a 20 gram size as well. All right, let's get into it. So I've just ground some coffee uh, and it smells pretty good. And I'm gonna try and get a real good, nice close up of the grounds in my dosage cup. Yeah, they look pretty darn nice. And uh, it's nice and soft and um, yeah, it's pretty padded, it's pretty fine. Um, I do find that though with uh, VST baskets, a bit finer is a bit better. Uh, all right, so let's um, see how it goes. Okay, I've loaded, I've purged, I'll purge again. As I said, 20 grams of coffee in. Um, yeah, generally for my coffees, I do a pretty simple, just one to two ratio. Um, so I, I don't have a scale here because I lent out my one that fits on here properly to a client because I'm a nice guy. So anyway, here we go. All right, so that clearly ran very quickly. But you know what, I'm just gonna give it a stir. I'm gonna taste it anyway. There's one thing about, it, uh, about this machine is that it is very forgiving. So 16 second shot, it might taste just passable. But you know, whatever. Butterscotch. Even at that quick, you can just taste butterscotch straight away. Uh, and that is a tick in my book because um, any uh, any flavors that are listed on a on a specific blend that you can get out of the beans without actually dialing it incorrectly, that's pretty good. Why not? It means it's roasted well. That's what it means. Um, so let's uh, pull a better shot. So just editing back the video and just thought I'd make a quick note that. Um, I pulled a lot more shots than what went in the video. I just wanted to show a shot that wasn't great, not dialed in properly, and a shot that was dialed in pretty much, pretty much 100%. Um, so yeah, in between the uh, two shots that were filmed was a lot more, but I've chosen to keep in one that was not so great and one that was really good. So, cool. All right, money shot, called it. Much better. 25 seconds, just about the yield I'm looking for. These are the glasses that I use in uh, uh, for my clients as well. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite used to the glasses. It's um, That's most probably 40, maybe 42 gram yield. I'll check it on the next shot, just to be certain for all the people. Yep, it's delicious. It's delicious. Does it taste like a red brick? No. 
like you can absolutely taste the cherry within that you taste the acidity um, butterscotch still absolutely and raisins and almonds again two flavors that kind of go together as well because well what in, in in a way like raisins they go well with nuts so i'm kind of tasting it as more of like a fruit and nut kind of thing um so yes that um that should taste really good i don't know why i'm surprised and i'm sorry for acting surprised because i'm not really surprised because i follow mr hoffman and I agree with uh, a lot of things that he says. I mean, him and I could have a good conversation on grinders, that's for certain. Um, yeah, flat burr, conical burr. I'd love to debate that with him, but um, this is a very nice blend and it's roasted well. And the fact that it still tastes really nice that I would like to have another one, even though it's, you know, traveled across the country, across the continent, across the world, <laughs> um, is, is just, Really fantastic, so thank you. So just uh, wanted to clear up a few things just for the video. Um, uh, yeah, I know I didn't use a scale to weigh the yield. Um, I just wanted to make coffee as if I was, you know, the majority of cafes in Australia. Um, or anyway, really probably, you know, weighing the grammage out of every single shot without, I don't know, a Black Eagle gravimetric machine. <laughs> Mr. Hoffman. Um, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, that's the reason why I did it that way. Um, and I just wanted to, I, this is just something I wanted to do just for myself, just because, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm a micro roaster in Melbourne and, you know, there are roasters that are so much larger than me that have, you know, more of the things that I would like to achieve. So um, doing this for me is kind of, bit of fun because I, I I like James Hoffman and what he stands for and I appreciate his YouTube presence and his audience um, so I wanted to yeah I wanted to test and taste what his company brings as there yeah as, as that's a sta it's a staple it's a staple it's the first thing you see on the um, on the shop it's a red brick espresso so I'm impressed because I like it and you know I'm not a Q grader yet but um, once we get there, um, you know, I'll be able to taste even more things that are in there and, um, and yeah, anyway, just, um, always wanting to continue to grow, continue to learn and, um, and, you know, be involved and be right in the middle of the coffee industry because it, it moves so quickly and, um, you know, keeping up with it is tough, but absolutely it's rewarding. So um, thanks everyone for watching and um, yeah, maybe buy some red brick espresso or even better, if you're in Australia, buy, buy some Australian roasted coffee just to support the economy. Do what you want. Have a good day.